everybody, the Destroyer here, and welcome back to another cast of the Rise of Witch King, patch 2.02, version 5.0.1. Today we have a 1v1 on Ports of Eisen 2, and I believe this is Isengard Mir match between two very good players, of course, Siluk and Alexis on 5, who is Cam, so I'll be calling him Cam. And, of course, we have Luke as well, so, yeah. Both players pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure if Cam is better than Luke or not. Cam plays with Maher a lot, so I'd imagine uh, <laughs> pretty good. Alright, so let's see what they're doing here. Cam's going for a Warg Pit opening after two Furnaces. So possibly going for Dire Wolves. Not Dire Wolves, uh, Wargs. Or he could go for the Warg Riders, of course. I guess we'll see what he does. And it looks like Siluk is going for the Clan Steading after two furnaces. Did he send his builder off this way? I don't remember. Probably not. Nope. No, he did not. And of course, Fords of Eisen 2, the classic. Everyone's favorite map in the world. I'm looking forward to the Halloween version. Which is going to be a reskin of Fords of Eisen 2. Should be kind of cool. But uh, I don't know if this will come out before or after Halloween, so I won't talk about that much. Anyway, let's see what we got here. We're going for Warg Packs. Nice. That's what I was waiting to see. So Cam's got a couple Warg Packs queued up there. Probably going to run around and try and do some harassment with them, no doubt. And of course, we have Wildman, as you would expect, from Cy Luke. I'll just call him Luke. Luke and Cam. That makes it easy. Yep. <laughs> yep, that's it. No, not so much. Alright, there's the first battalion of Wildman. He is throwing down Urk Pit as well. So Luke will be getting uh, probably crossbows, I'd imagine. That is the bread and butter of Isengard generally, is crossbows and Wildman. Wildman to tank and do the damage, and crossbows, of course, to finish off the units with the crossbows. Alright, we do have some wargs out on the field somewhere. Let's find them. There they are. He's trying to chase down this builder. Builder throwing down a wall hub to save himself. Which I still think is a stupid feature of this patch. And every patch, really, but <laughs> it's, that's how it is. And they are very good for destroying uh, furnaces, though. Especially with left unchecked. They do have the howl, just like Warg Riders. So they get that 50% damage, 50% armor buff. And these are actually underused and pretty effective at harassment. And of course, they are good at what? Swordsman? Is that what I said? They're good against swordsmen and archers. Which I always find interesting because the dire wolves are good against pikemen. You would think they'd be good against the same thing considering they're very roughly the same unit, just different skin. And different ability, I guess. But no. Wargs are actually different. Entirely. So they'll actually be pretty effective against these as well. It looks like. Cam has gone for crossbows as well, throwing down his Uruk Pit. So crossbows and warg rider, or wargs. Interesting combo. Not bad, actually. Very good, actually, a counter to the Wildman, turns out. So interesting to see that being used. Because I wouldn't have thought of using wargs to counter Wildman. Of course, he uh, can also use them to run around and destroy Siluk's furnaces. Really what he's doing here. They do die fairly quickly to archer fire, it seems, but uh, they are quick as well, so they can run away. I believe they're the same speed as warg riders. Seems so, just by watching them run around, they seem to be. So, a bunch of these running around with some crossbow support. Pretty good. And that'll keep his opponent on the defensive as well, having to chase down these wargs. Stop his uh, furnaces from being destroyed. Keeps his opponent on the back foot while he can keep the pressure up. He's getting Urukai swordsmen as well. So Cam will bring some real infantry to the battle. And getting more crossbows as well. Siluk pushing across the fort with his Wildman crossbow army. Wildman and crossbow army, rather. Of course, uh, Cam is ready to engage. He has a stronger force. The Wildman do not stand up to the Urukai swordsmen, of course. And he's lost some men just running by these crossbows. Let's take a look at the base here. Did he just use spy? Yeah. 
Seems Cam ha does have Vision of the Palantir. All, vi all that does in this patch is just spying. It doesn't give a range bonus or buff of any kind like other patches do. Which is just fine with me. We have War Chant for uh, Luke, though. So Cam opting to go for Intel rather than uh, the War Chant, which is actually works out for him pretty well. It allowed him to counter the Wildman spam with the crossbows and the uh, wa Warg Riders. Wargs. <laughs> I keep calling them Warg Riders. I'm not used to saying just Wargs because it's usually Riders on top. Because I'm just not used to seeing them on the field, quite frankly. Nobody uses them. And they should. If this is one lesson to learn, it's just you can utilize Wargs and Dire Wolves to great effect for Ang Angler as well. Because it's generally the same uh, idea. Luke has some Wildman in here. Looks like he'll force Cam to destroy that furnace there. And now Cam getting his Wildman of his own to bolster his forces there. Cam's army is looking pretty strong. Although Luke has a pretty strong army as well. Luke has a Pikeman now. I'm not sure if those are good against Wargs or what. I'm going to be honest. I'd, I'd assume if they're good against Warg Riders, why would they not be good against Wargs without the Rider? It's the same unit. Just without a Rider. So that would make sense. So definitely the Pikes are the way to go, I'd assume. Also, Pikemen, obviously good for creeping Wargs like this. So I'd imagine it's the same concept. So this should help out immensely. So the battle goes here. Looks like War Chant being thrown in on Luke's army. Does Cam have War Chant yet? No, he does not. I don't even know if he'll use it or use his five power points to get it. He probably will, though. We have Creebane for Luke, though. That could be pretty useful. Negating his enemy's armor and damage a little bit. There's the War Chant immediately being followed with a Creebane. Very nicely done. And he managed to get that furnace right next to the fort, which is a good pickup. Getting these original three uh, furnaces is always a nice pickup to get, because those are uh, going to be the best ones, the most safe ones. If you can get rid of the safe ones, that usually are the ones that end up as level three furnaces. And you generally don't have a level three furnace. Looks like Luke's army was cleaned up, though, by a lot of crossbows. And the remnants of his army are dying over here. You know, this wild men from Cam going into the back of the base of Luke. Being chased hastily by some wild men from Luke. He has some crossbows here as well. Looking to cut him off. Although, it looks like he juked him and went around. <laughs> and now we have a counterattack from Cam. With a pretty strong force of crossbows and wild men himself. So we'll see how well that does. He should do a pretty good amount of damage. Wild men will fall very fast to the crossbows, as you would expect. Being very lightly armored and a, a melee unit as well. Which is just generally weak to a crossbow or an arrow fire. At the moment, of course, we're focused on the furnace while the crossbows do the damage to the units. And you have some of Luke's crossbows taking out some of the enemy ones. Looks like he's got some more pikemen on the field. And just busy chasing guys all around. He is actually raiding in the north, though. He's got some pikes and some uh, wildmen here. So Luke will pick up the gold and stuff from that and carry on towards Cam's base with that. Even though we do have Wildman over here. Looks like Cam has transitioned completely out of the wargs. Opting not to go for wargs anymore. Instead throwing down a second clan setting. So he's going for the Wildman spam now. So he's transitioned from wargs to Wildman spam with crossbows. Interesting. So maybe he just wanted to try something different in the beginning. It seemed to work out pretty well for him though. Like I said, it did keep his opponent on the defensive for quite a while. Allowing him to keep his base safe, keep all his furnaces up. And get more units out in the field. Cam will lose that furnace there though, unfortunately for him. He does have some Urkai though, which is of course great against these Urkai pikemen. Cam has lost two furnaces now to that, unfortunately. The war chant definitely helping out here. 
pikemen with war chant are going to be quite tanky, but they will die, of course, in prolonged melee with those guys. No doubt. Cam does have a defense force here. He does have a few crossbows and wildmen. And we have a few raiding units of uh, Luke here. Some crossbows and some... <laughs> it's like a very few amount of pikes. War chant being thrown down on Cam's army there. You should clean up Luke's guys without much trouble. I would expect. Of course, there's some crossbows here as well. I'm going to pick off these wildmen easily. So both both teams kind of doing the same thing to each other. As you would expect, really, from an Isengard mirror. I think a good thing to do, if one of the players had time, would be to possibly go for uh, Deathbringers or something. Warg Riders wouldn't be bad either. If Cam would uh, upgrade this and go for Warg Riders... That would actually be pretty effective, I think. His his enemy is using pikes, but not very frequently. Luke is, is really using pikemen to uh, counter the wargs, but since the wargs have stopped, he's kind of stopped in the pikes as well. Sending a few here and there. As you see, he's kind of still opting to go for the wildmen over the pikemen, majorly. And now he's getting some Urukai of his own. Cam's army is pretty large. We do have Devastation for Luke. His new power he's got. He's also got 675 command point limit. That's where Cam has a 600 command point limit, and he's got a war chant and Creebane himself. Cam's army is fairly large. Luke has a fair amount of guys over here as well. Mostly crossbows. Which will do fairly well. Both teams under the effect of the Creebane. So, of course, it's going to be an even fight. But, of course, Cam is outnumbering his opponents quite uh, substantially there. So we'll clean those up and secure his base once again. Meanwhile, moving in to raid some more with some wildmen. Wildmen are actually really good for raiding, especially when you give them the torch upgrade. They do so much damage to uh, structures. <coughs> they also do increase melee damage to units as they will set them on fire as well. But they are still lightly armored and sometimes it's not worth the cost. 300 is a lot to throw down on a wildman unit. It doesn't even cost 300 to begin with. It's really only good too if you can uh, actually really get the effect to uh, to use them to the full effect is what I'm trying to say. Not just use uh, upgrade them and throw them at an army and just have them die to crossbow fire or something like that. You really want to sneak them around with the torch upgrade or whatever you do that and try and destroy as many furnaces and buildings as possible. We do have alerts out in the field for Luke. So it looks like he may be the first one to get one. I don't think Cam has any alerts yet, or at all, if he's planning on it. I mean, majority of players go for alerts. Although sometimes you see a Sharku, or even a Saruman. <laughs> Generally, Saruman's not the first hero, but you never know. Because he's very expensive. And there we go, Luke's gone for the torch upgrades. Torch upgrades with a whole ground stance. Not bad. So he's, uh, fell back to regroup and war chant his guys there. And of course he does have alerts picking off some crossbows. Which is a good call. Like he might actually be targeting these guys. Can't really tell. Yeah, I think Lurch is actually shooting the swordsman. Makes sense. They're the tankiest ones there and he'll do the most damage to them. And now they are dead and he can begin picking off the crossbows, which he does nicely. Of course, once he's alone by himself, he won't want to fight all these crossbows. Those Urukai swordsmen tank that damage like a boss, though. And now that he's realizing he's alone, he will run away. There's the devastation, and now Alert has some reinforcements. And now Cam has a war chant, though. We'll give him an advantage here. These crossbow guys picked off in melee range. Looks like Luke cleaned up a few guys over here. Hasn't lost much. He's got a lumber mill in the back there now. A little skirmish in the forward there. Nothing too major. Looks like Cam has overpowered Luke's army over here once again, causing Lurch to flee, flee in terror here. Tactical retreat, as they would call it. What are those? Oh, just wildmen. Filthy wildmen from the hills, of course. Axe wouldn't be too bad either, but crossbows would do just fine against the 
the unarmored units of uh, Isengard's Wildman hordes. So, and he can crossbows themselves. Not too tanky, so. I'd say uh, crossbows and Wildman is a good strat. But I definitely. One battalion of Wargriders would absolutely be devastating against Psyluke. Or even vice versa. Look at this clump. It'd be disgusting. Oh, there we go. We have a Wildman summon from Luke in the midst of the Archer line. That should do some damage to Cam's army, no doubt. Cam now has devastation as well. He's at 825 command point limits, and Psyluke is at 850. He's at 639. Cam's at 322. So Cam's army is much smaller right now in comparison to Luke's army. Of course, uh, he's got guys up here as well. Some swordsmen doing damage and some crossbows to support them. And Luke is starting to take a bit of control. A bit of control here. Not too much. There we go, some more grinders finally. I'd say they were a bit overdue. <laughs> Looks like he's opting to go down here. Easily running through those wildmen. Absolutely just killed the entire battalion without even stopping. And it shows how strong the wargs will be here. Nice devastation, undoubtedly from Luke, taking trees off the enemy's side. Which makes more sense than taking them off your own side first. If your opponent relies on trees, it's smart to actually take them away. Like if he used it here, if you can see it, he would actually uh, just stop that production. Or the tree uh, farming from here. If he did it here as well, it would probably be a better spot. Not only is there a lot of trees here, but it would stop these guys from being able to work and gain money for Cam. But he is able to take it out regardless because he has a lot of guys over here. Cam has a lot of forces building up and coming out as well. He has a lot of guys here. So they're fairly evenly matched, although Luke has a, another very large army down to the south. And of course he has his lurks. So I'd say Cam is now on the back foot here. And Luke is doing fairly well. Which is a nice turn around there. Looks like a lot of those units were summoned and they need to spawn, leaving Luke's army looking rather small. And Luke will go back to the big army to regroup. And now he has a Sharku. Very nice. Sharku, of course, will help deal with the Warg Riders and also just nice for uh, raiding. Looks like a Wildman summoned from Cam now in the midst of the archer line of Luke's army. And begin cutting down these crossbows fairly quickly. Wildman summoning the archer line is always devastating. Sometimes you live through it, but most of the time you guys... Archers are very weak, so generally speaking, you will lose a lot of archers, if not all of them. And now Sharky will begin picking off some of these guys, trampling and hitting his way through them. Sharky is a very good hero, sometimes underused, but he can be quite useful indeed, especially when you're using wards. And as your enemies using wards, he can target wards or warg riders come under your control. So you can actually steal your opponent's warg riders. So if Cam opts, opts to use warg riders too much, which he is trying, to use some, which is not a bad idea, but a shark who kind of counters that in a way. So you do have to watch out for that. Because if he gets level 5, he'll be able to use that. And of course he gives the leadership to wargs and warg riders as well. Which is another thing you have to watch out for. Just trying to say that Sharku is dangerous. <laughs> you have to be careful. As you see, he is the only one who can catch these wargs as well. And he won't take too much damage in the process. And there you go, level 3 Sharku. Very nice. Luke pushing in on the northern front here. On the side of the fords. Killing off the wildmen there. No one's captured that in yet. The control has still been untouched. Looks like Sharku just managing to get out of there. Alerts as well. I think Cam really needs a hero at this point. Of course, his economy is probably not a. Uh, I mean, it's not bad. So I guess he could. Just has to save up a little bit. Of course, he can't stop producing troops to let his uh, opponent overwhelm him, though. 
And that's something you have to weigh in your mind. Is it worth stopping the production of your troops to save up for a hero sometimes? Sometimes it's not. Sometimes uh, that will get you overwhelmed. Especially against a team like the Goblins or something. Where they just never stop, <laughs> never cease. Endless waves of hordes of Goblin Warriors. Or Angmar for that matter, or Mordor. Any spam faction really. You could almost call Isengard a spam faction with the Wildmen. They're only 150, which is pretty pretty low in comparison to a uh, battalion for Urukai, which are 400. I mean, Orc Warriors are what, 100? So really, it's only 50 more than the Orc. Which isn't that much. I believe uh, Thralls are 200, aren't they? The Thrall is 200 and the good and the bad battalion is free or something like that. And they're still considered spam. So I guess you could consider uh, Isengard a spam faction if you thought of it that way. So Cam has lost any furnaces up here, which is unfortunate. Luke will get this as well. And possibly the slumber mill. The slumber mill actually doesn't hasn't been doing anything because there's no laborers over here. So that won't be the biggest loss in the world, but losing this furnace on the other hand is not a deal. Looks like he will save it though. Lots of crossbows here to defend with. We do have freezing rain, I believe, going on. I can hear it. I just can't see the effect for whatever reason. Strange. Sometimes I can see the effect, sometimes I can't. I don't know what affects that. Is it map specific? Like, can I not see it on this map? That's a possibility. But I don't actually know. But yeah, one team is got the old freezing rain effect on them, which nullifies leadership and enemy armor and damage. Which is not ideal for a. Uh, that would be against Siluk. So Siluk is taking the debuff. Siluk has a watcher, though. That could be very, very useful. There's battles all over the map here now. So the furnace goes down there for Luke. Just so came attacking there. The watcher over here. So exploding all these guys. Killing and eating. Well, in theory, he should eat. Sometimes he grabs the units and eats them. I like that. <laughs> Doesn't look like he's hungry. Just feeling murderous. And that was a pretty devastating hit to Cam's army, no doubt. Yeah, both these players are playing very well. Both playing at their peak. <laughs> I don't know if this is at their peak, but both are doing pretty good. As Isengard Mirror is concerned, I'd say both teams are kind of even. But it's been a little bit back and forth. Cam is now starting a bit of a counterattack on Luke. It seems. Which is interesting. We'll see how much damage he manages to do here. I believe this is Luke's army. It's hard to tell sometimes. Yep, it is. It's Cam's Wildman there. Cam's Wildman here as well, picking up his crossbows. Looks like Luke has some guys down in the south here, raiding this furnace. This troll hasn't been taken out either. So neither player opting to go for the, uh, the outpost. Or the inn, rather. The inn can be kind of pointless for Isengard sometimes. Because it really just gives you Wildmen. But you already have access to Wildmen, so it doesn't really benefit you much. If you can afford a st another uh, one of these, it really doesn't benefit you at all to kill the Cave Troll. Unless you want the Cave Troll gold and stuff. Or just really need it. It can be good early game when you maybe don't want to buy a, a clan setting. If you uh, open with a Urk Pit, possibly. And you want to still build Wildwind. Well, that can be a useful way to do it. You build some uh, pikemen first and then go creep the cave troll possibly. And do that. You can get it that way. It's a valid tactic. Right but I'd say if you're opening with Wildman, generally speaking, you probably don't even need to worry about it. Cam has lots of crossbows here. I'm surprised Luke hasn't gone for uh, Warg Riders at this point. I think War Riders would actually benefit Luke more so than it would benefit uh, Cam. Especially considering he has a Sharker with him. 
Has Cam has not has Cam built a single pike? I don't know. He has I don't think he has and for good reason he hasn't needed to. The only thing that's mounted is actually Sharku. He's continuing to kick the ass of all these war graders. He's level six now. I'm surprised he didn't just take them. I guess he wants to level up. Which is fair. Sharku's about to die. Once he gets seven, he gets man eater, he can heal himself and get a buff. Which is pretty nice to have as well. It's actually very nice. And now Luke doing some damage to Cam's base once again. He's got the war chance. Somebody's got the team land. I think that's uh, Luke's as well. 50% damage, 50% armor. Which is essentially the same thing as war chance. I don't think they stack, of course. There's a dragon. Dragon from Cam. Interesting. So that will fend off uh, Luke's army, of course. And looks like Cam will reposition the dragon, of course. No point in wasting it. Undoubtedly going down here to do some damage. Luke is very close to getting a dragon of his own, I believe. Or Dragon Strike, one of the two. Generally speaking, in patch 2.02, I'd say Dragon is more useful than Dragon Strike. Dragon Strike is nice, but Dragon tends to get more done, I think. And can also chase around armies and such, kill them off. Somehow he missed. <laughs> How did that dragon manage to miss? We'll never know. But with the dragon doing that, that will cut off the production line of Siluk, who is immediately beginning to put some more Uruk pits down. Is he repositioning or did he despawn? He probably despawned. I would expect. We have Saruman out for Luke, though. That could make a huge difference. With alerts of Saruman and a Sharku, he should have a, a whale of a time with this army. Saruman is going to have a field day with this amount of guys. I would love to see the wizard blast and fireball happen, and, and I hope we do. <laughs> so even though Siluk has taken a bit of damage to his base, quite a substantial amount, in fact, he's by no means out of the game. He, of course, is building his production buildings right back, and he'll be right back in the match. And he has the hero superiority that Cam has lacked the entire game, because Cam has opted not to build heroes. Which is a curious concept, honestly. I hear a dragon. Oh, it looks like he's going for the dragon strike. That should be pretty effective here, though. I did say it was bad. I didn't say it was bad. I mean, it's going to do a lot of damage. Oh, he actually managed to catch a lot of Cam's army while I was going through. Absolutely devastating. And instantly just destroys that area. <coughs> oh god, that's that's brutal. So Cam took a ton of damage there. Shark was over here. Got caught, got, a, caught a bit out of position there. A bit too deep, I'd say. Sarmon has a wizard blast if he wants to use it on these wildmen. Unless those are... Oh, those are actually Luke's wildmen. Summon them down to uh, Warchant his entire army, which is pretty smart. Big wizard blast from Saruman. And now, I'd say, uh, he is in trouble. There is a Wildman Summon in uh, Luke's base as well. Targeting down his Forgeworks. Definitely don't want that to happen. Forgeworks would uh, give him the the edge against his enemy. Devastation over here as well. And Dudley from Luke. And with Saruman in tow, it's going to be very difficult for... Uh, Cam to actually win here, I think. Cam will get a lot done, though, with these wildmen. These aren't even summoned. Oh, these are all regular wildmen with torch upgrades. I thought they were summoned wildmen because there were just so many. And they just seemed like they were very abruptly there. Of course, the fort is quite safe, though. There's the ring as well. If uh, you wanted to get that. Cam's base is fairly safe, but... Only slightly. He does have a lot of troops, but of course Saruman can kill many, many men in one fell swoop. Which he will do so right now, I have no doubt. And there's another big wizard blast. You gotta love Saruman. He's so much fun to play with. Easily my favorite hero to play with in the game. Is Saruman. Probably followed by Gandalf, as you would expect. I don't like Gandalf as much, though. I don't like the lightning sword as much as I like the fireball. 
Word of Power is pretty great, though, I will admit. The Sorry Light, pretty strong as well. But nothing beats the old Word of Power. And yeah, no one's got a clear uh, winning move here yet. So the game will go on. And Cam will attempt to uh, recuperate from that attack and push against Luke once again. And it looks like Luke will capture the ring. I don't think he'll be using it. He's way far off. But if there was any team in the game that would be able to build a Sauron, it would be Isengard. <laughs> because they are, of course, the team with the best economy in the game. They have so many economy powers. And of course they have Lurks as well. Who has the uh, pillage. Just even standing next to him get uh, kills. Give him money. So you get essentially scavenger with him. You get the uh, fuel the fires, you get industry, and you get devastation. That's four ways to make extra cash. Which is huge. And of course the lumber mills in addition to Furnace's help with fuel of fires, obviously on top of that, but just in general. Lumber mills are an additional thing that you can throw down. Two furnaces. Which like men of the West don't have, obviously, or elves or any of that. Any of those good teams don't have lumber mills. I wouldn't see why the men of the West couldn't have a lumber mill. It's not like they're tree hugging hippies like the elves. But hey, who knows? Maybe that would make the elves mad. <laughs> oh, I hear a watcher. There it is. So push back Cam. He lost a fair amount of guys in that attack. Surprise attack from him. Cam's base looks safe. I'd say Luke's base looks fairly safe as well. I highly doubt Luke is going for the ring. He probably just secured it so his enemy couldn't. Which makes sense. Because the ring could immediately change the tide of battle and allow a player to win. That's really why the ring why the ring is on in the first place. The ring is left on, so if there's a stalemate like this, that one player can actually get that edge to win the game. That is more or less the gist of it. Sarwan is level four now. Once he gets level six, he gets the Thunderbolt, which is pretty useful. Very strong attack. Great for taking out a bunch of enemies like this as well. Saruman's great for AoE. He's absolutely amazing. And of course, once he hits level 10, he gets permanently gained control of target enemies in the Worm Tongue ability, which can be absolutely huge. He could steal the entire army of Cam and turn it against him if he ever gets level 10. I don't know if we'll ever get to see that in this game, but at this rate, maybe. <laughs> as no player is seeming to win it, Anytime soon. Seems Psyluke doesn't actually have the dragon yet. Cam has Dragon Strike and Dragon. I don't remember Cam using Dragon Strike though. I, m I must have missed that. It was semi fairly recently. So Cam is down to 600 command point limit at the top, 650 for Luke. So both teams are hitting each other in the economy front for sure, taking out as many furnaces and trying to get power points all over the place. As you would expect. Sormar and Lurtz leading this army. Lurtz, of course, giving leadership to the army as well. Something that uh, Cam doesn't have. That should be pretty big. I think a siege works would be great here. If Luke would build like a siege works here and just maybe get a battering ram or something. That would help take down this fort fairly quickly. As long as he can defend it. But he has the force to defend it with, so it wouldn't be a bad idea. Of course, his base isn't under attack. Game is not letting up, of course. Raiding from the north and the west. Looks like Cam has sent some guys to fight the cave troll. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea. Oh, we got the Tain land. Benefiting uh, Luke's army. Looks like Cam's fort might go down here. Saruman getting a huge wizard blast off on the bulk of Cam's army, and Cam will lose his fortress is going to seal the deal, I think, for this game, for Luke. Because that was really what he needed, just a bunch of guys around the fort with the little tiny land. He should take down the fort fairly quickly. But yeah, definitely a pretty good game. 
And there you go. Cam's been defeated. And Psyluke will take the victory there. It's a nice little Isengard mirror, I must say. We'll play to both players for sure. I wish I could play that well. <laughs> for sure. Ugh. Someday, maybe, but probably not ever in my life. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I will see you in the next cast of The Rise of the Witch King, patch 2.02. See you next time.